Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. Today we're looking at offensive missile cranking. It's something that is very relevant to all BVR capable fighter jets. So to split the video down we're going to have a quick overview, then we're going to talk about when we should crank and any exceptions, then we're going to look at the method and do a bit more explaining about the variables used in the method. Then we're going to do a couple of examples, examine them, and that should give us a decent description of what to do. So, overview. What is offensive missile cranking? It is the optimal method of a head-on BVR kill shot. So let's do our usual, usual thing and pick away. So method is method. Head-on means that we are facing the opponent and the opponent is facing us. And kill shot is kill shot. Remember, when you want to shoot a missile at uh, another aircraft. It's not always to kill them, and that's something uh, to think about. In fact, you could almost say it's rarely to kill them in, uh, in a modern BVR. And it's something that works with all missile types, whether we're talking Fox 1s, Fox 2s, or Fox 3 missile types. Next, when would we crank? And this is very important. Something like a cranking, uh, an offensive missile crank, if used in the wrong place with the wrong parameters, will actually do more harm than good. So you've got to know when to use it. First of all, only when you're going for a kill shot. So in modern combat, assuming that there are more than one hostiles and possibly more than one friendlies, then we're not always going to be firing missiles to kill people. In fact, reality, if you go and watch a Satal match, you know, uh, professional matches of several blues versus several reds, something GR takes part in now, then rarely do you actually fire a missile that's actually to kill someone. It's usually for posture shots and for team tactics is what the missiles are there for. Only occasionally will you fire a missile that is intended to actually kill someone. And that's similar to real life combat as well. So that is an exclusive thing. We'll only do cranking when we're going in for a kill shot. We'll use it for a 1v1. So as we've got this example here, we've got our guy here against a bad guy here. And there's no one else that is affecting us. Everyone else is 20 plus miles away. Or one versus a close group so we've got our good guy here and let's say we're fighting a bunch of ai controlled bad guys and we put them in close formation so if we've got a close group and they're all you know within kind of a five mile rough area uh, we can consider that hostile that group as um, as one entity in that case and we can consider that as a 1v1 and that is another place we were doing our missile crank assuming there was no one else within the ao outside of that five mile box. It could also be on a 1v1 that are split from a main group. So often you'll see, uh, again, a Satal match, let's say six blues versus six reds. Uh, during the main fight, there will be no cranking, but if one hostile and one friendly get split off from the main 6v6 group, as happens, and we're kind of more than 20 miles away from that group, then this essentially becomes a one-on-one -on -one at that point. And we can consider that a one-on-one -on -one at that point, and a crank at that point would be relevant and useful. And the reason we're only doing this against one target or a group of targets that's essentially acting as one is because when we do this, we essentially lose situational awareness. So that if there are several hostiles in front of us at different azimuths spread out, then we can only concentrate on the guy that we're cranking on. We'll probably lose situational awareness of the other guys and we'll probably end up being shot down. As we've said before, this is only relevant on a head-on target. So only if he's, you know, within 90 degrees of facing you, you would not do this on a cranking target. You would not do this on a rear aspect target. Uh, sorry, I meant flanking, not cranking target. So a guy that's heading 90 degrees left or right or more, you would not use this on. And we would only use this on a target that is aggressing us. So how would we know if the target is aggressing us? Well, the answer is experience. Only experience can tell you that. There's no short and fire way. If it's a target is, is locking you up, if he's spiking your RWR, then you know. But it, it may not be that simple. Or if he's heading directly towards us, then we've got a pretty good idea he's heading towards us. But he might not be spiking us. He may be locking us a TWS. It may be a flanker locking us in IRST. And he might not be facing us at all. He might be cranking us. He might be heading 70 degrees off bore in which case it doesn't look like he's um, uh, attacking us but in fact he is it's just that he's cranking us so really that's something you're only going to know by experience so i'm not really going to try and dissect that here next are there any exceptions so i'm going to describe what we're doing here but is there anything 
that is possibly not included and that is the aim 54 that is if the hostile is firing aim 54 variants at us there may be an exception i don't know i can't be sure at the moment because we haven't got this far in testing with the aim 54 yet so just something to bear in mind this may not be relevant if the hostile has aim 54s it may still be i'm not like i said i'm just not sure yet and i guess the other thing i could have put down here is how important is cranking if within this bunch of parameters here so if we're within this parameters here how important is cranking well it's the difference between life and death if this guy cranks and this guy doesn't this guy will win 100 percent of the dogfights if this guy cranks and this guy cranks then assuming equal pilot skill it's a 50 50 chance that's how important it is it's whether you want to live or whether you want to die so if you can't be bothered to do it and the other guy does it you will lose 100 percent of the time assuming obvious things like equal pilot skill equal missiles and stuff like that so we've talked about roughly what this is we've talked about in which parameters we would do this so now let's talk about which missiles we can do this with as the guy that's doing the cranking well we can do it with any medium or long range missile is the answer we can do it with any fox one variant an aim 7 uh, an r27 or a super 530 and that's just you know there are other fox ones these are just the ones that i've picked out here or we could do it with any Fox 3 variant, an AMRAM, an R77, an AIM-54. I can't remember if there's any more in DCS. I don't think there is at the moment. But So basically any medium or long range missile. And we should also talk about the scope of this video. The scope of this video is we are looking at the time between when we decide to engage this guy here. So we're in cruise and we decide to engage this guy here at whatever range it's going to be. 40 miles, 50 miles, 80 miles, 160 miles to the point where we fire our missile once we fired our missile that's the end of the scope of this video okay uh, because at that point it depends what kind of missile you fired as to what you do so if you fired an aim 7 at that point that will be different to if you fired a fox 3 and aim 120 uh, we will in our example we will do the complete move we'll fire the missile and we'll get cold but remember that will only be relevant to the missile that we're looking at today which is the aim 120 fox 3 in fact we talk about it now it's, it's pretty simple if we've got a fox 3 we can fire at the guy and then we can split s and go home get to safety and that's what we're going to be doing with a fox 3 if we fire a fox 1 and assuming that the hostile doesn't fire any equal range fox 1 at that time then we would have to carry on and follow up in fact what we'll probably do is another type of crank until the missile hit home but we're just going to be actually using the fox 3 today so in the finer details of the crank so the first thing we've got our blue guy here our red guy here we are head on and we are assuming that this guy doesn't crank. Now, this guy may crank as well, out of interest. And if that's the case, all of the rules that we're looking at here still apply. It just means he's going to be a bit more difficult to kill. But other than that, everything is exactly the same. For this case, though, we're just going to assume that he's a dumb AI guy who don't know how to crank. And he's just going to fly towards us. Whatever, wherever we fly, he'll just point his aircraft towards us and just pound missiles at us. And everything in this crank relies on this variable, R let, R lethal, or R no escape. That means the distance between us and him at which we can fire our selected missile, which is one of these, and it be in range, uh, and it be within what we call the lethal or the no escape range, so basically the hostile can't escape. In other words, it's a kill range, it's for a kill shot. This R lethal has to be worked out by your brain, not by any nothing else is going to work it work out on the fly and it's something you just have to learn to do after a while you'll just do it automatically you won't even think about it i've done it so many times now i don't even think about it i don't even do the maths you just know and it is determined by certain parameters the speed of our aircraft and the altitude of our aircraft and the speed of his aircraft and the altitude of his aircraft now it doesn't um include the aspect of ours and his aircraft because in this offensive missile crank we're always assuming that we are head-on so the aspect is always going to be assumed as hot so we before we go any further we need to ca calculate our lethal okay so we've got our lovely little guide that we always use now this guide is first of all assuming that we're flying at v opt v optimal velocity optimal which we calculate as altitude relevant mach 1 now this chart here is not specific to offensive missile cranking and therefore it's at the wrong speed in offensive missile cranking we always go at v max the maximum velocity of our aircraft at that point in time with that loadout with that fuel uh, basically that just means put full afterburners on and it's the maximum speed you can reach and that is going always going to be in a modern fighter above v optimal above mach 1 so that's something we need to take into account 
So we're going to go down to our graph now, and let's first of all make the assumption that this guy is co-altitude with us. Now that's often not going to be the case. We're often going to be at a different altitude than the hostile, and that's fine. We can factor that in as well. But to simplify things, we're going to say that he's at 20,000 ASL, and we're at 20,000 ASL to make the maths easy. So we can consult our art lethal... Uh, chart here the graph assumes v optimal and hot aspect so we're at 20,000 feet co altitude so all we're going to do is draw a line north from 20,000 it's going to be about there I've got no way of doing this really uh, otherwise so I'm going to draw a line left and uh, that's going to be about 8.5 miles so our lethal 8.5 miles with v opt is 8 point uh, sorry is 8.5 miles now we're not v opt we're at v max so what's that going to be one back 1.1 1 .1 to 1.2 1 in a, uh, 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 an F-15 or maybe we'll do it in a Hornet so let's say Mac one Mac 1.15. So we're going to have to add a little bit on here, and there's no exact way of doing this, especially when you're calculating on the, this on the fly. So I'm going to add about 15%. So roughly 8.8 uh, .8 .8 miles at 15%, in my mind, is going to be about 10 miles. So 10 miles is our ILR lethal calculated with the values um, on the go. So let's just say, uh, so that's what we're going to use, but let's just say, uh, for instance, in a different fight, let's say that the hostile was angels 10 and we were angels 30 okay then we would consult our chart in our mind because we've memorized all this what's halfway between angels 10 and angels 30 it's angels 20 it's a bad example <laughs> because we've just used that okay let's scratch that let's say that the hostile was on the deck and we were angels 30 then for that we would go halfway between zero and angels 30 that is angels 15 uh, so what we're doing is we're interpolating on the fly here and we will go up to there we will go across there i know that data point from the f15 is seven miles so in that case with him on the deck and us at angel 30 we would do be doing a seven mile with our lethal bearing in mind v optimal so we've got our, our lethal now we need now we need to fill out our ma our next variable which is angle a Angle A is relevant to your jet, and it's the maximum uh, sideward slewable angle of your radar antenna. This is going to be different for all aircraft, so you just have to memorize it for your aircraft. In the FA, if we say we're using F-18, I think it's oh, 70 degrees slewable left and right. So A is going to be 70. I've drawn this here at about 45 degrees. 70 degrees in reality would be a bit more aggressive. It would be something like that. Really aggressive crank. And that's because you've got a highly slewable radar. In the F-14 it's 65 degrees. In the F-15 it's 70 de uh, 60 degrees. So it's different with different aircraft. And the flanker I haven't got a clue now. I think it's highly... Uh, uh, it's a really long antenna arm, isn't it, on the flanker. So I think it's really high. Uh, that's on the new flanker though. So I'm not really sure. You've just got to know your plane basically. So we are going to engage the guy from whatever miles. Uh, it has to be above our, le our lethal plus 15. So let's say we're coming from 40 miles. Our lethal plus 15, sorry, plus 15 in this case is 25 miles. So first thing we do is we max burners and we get up to the to get up to Vmax or as close to Vmax as we can. Then we have to make our left or right turn, and the left or right turn, whether it's left or right, is going to depend on stuff yeah it's going to depend on is there an s300 on the right hand side if so let's crank left is there a boat on the left hand side that's got air to air air to air missiles then and we can see on our rwr and our data link then crank right so that's how we make that decision it's not just whether you're fancy left or right we will always crank at angle a the maximum uh, crank a uh, slowable angle of your radar minus a few degrees you don't want to be right on the edge because if it slips over a by one degree you'll lose the lock and then you are sitting duck so allow just a few degrees inside so i'll do 65 today instead of 70 just to allow that a bit of human error and we will initiate the crank at our lethal plus 25 in our case at angels 20 uh, co-altitude we'll do that at exactly 15 miles nautical miles from the hostile now as we do our crank we're going to crank for a long time we're going to crank for about i don't know 10 to 20 miles something like that i suppose it depends on what the hostile does um, and what our, our lethal is this is not just flying in a straight line this is constantly adjusted depending on what the hostile does the host it's unlikely that they're just going to keep going straight they're going to either fly keep flying towards us or crank themselves and so this means we're going to constantly adjust left and right left and right so we've got to constantly monitor our our angle um between us and the hostile we do that in depending again you've got to know your jet in a f-18 you can do it with You've got numbers, you've got a, um, an offset angle on the HUD. In an F-15, you do it by looking at the B-scope to keep him on the edge of the B-scope. In the flanker, you've got another method I don't even know. Uh, the Tomcat, I haven't even tried this in the Tomcat, so 
you know, you've just got to know your plane is all. We will complete the crank at our lethal plus three. This is not negotiable. This is something we always do. In this case, it's 13 miles. At that point, we will turn a high G turn towards the target. It's got to be as efficient as we can and as high G as we can, but we must not over alpha. We must keep our speed. Keeping VMAX throughout this is imperative. I know there will be some burning of the speed, but we've got to just do the best we can. So an optimal turn towards the target. And this is life and death. When I say an optimal turn, I mean an optimal turn. I don't mean turn at three Gs. You're dead if you do that. It's got to be perfect if you're going to do a successful crank. So that gives us three miles to complete the turn, at which point we will be at our lethal. When you are at our lethal, you will fire the missile, not one mile before, not one mile after. It will be at our lethal, anything else, and you'll probably be dead, and this guy will survive. So in this case, we're going to fire at exactly 10 miles, and we're going to fire one missile and one missile only. You never fire more than one missile from an offensive missile crank. The only exception may be that at the very last second, as you're about to fire your missile, you'll see that the target is no longer attacking you, and he's turned away. That is very unlikely for instance on an offensive missile crank i've never seen that happen so you might as well assume he's always going to be attacking you whoops so you fire your missile at our lethal and then you do whatever you do depending on fox one or fox three so fox three i'm going to split s and turn away with a fox one you are going to carry on tracking the target until the missile hits if the guy fires at you at the same time that you fire him at, i.e. you've got an equal shot opportunity to him, with a Fox 1, then you probably just split S and call off the attack. With a Fox 3, obviously the missile is self-guiding. Fire and forget, and you can just turn away. By the time, there will be some time between firing and it going pitbull, but by the time you completely got to that point in your split S, the missile will, at this range, the missile will almost certainly have gone pitbull, and you are safe to split S. Note, if we're doing this at Angels 30, uh, you may need to leave a little extra time before you split S to ensure that the missile has gone pitbull. In most planes, F-15 or whatever, you can see on the HUD when the missile has gone pitbull and you can perform your move. In this case, at 10 miles, we can pretty much do it exactly straight away. In this case, uh, an A120C will go pitbull at 8 miles from the target, from my memory. And so, yeah, it's going to cover those eight miles, those two miles before Pitbull almost instantaneously. We can split it straight away. Right, so that's how we make our decision about what we do once we've fired our missile. If you want to be super optimal, what we'll do with a Fox 3, because we know we're going to be split essing, is invert the aircraft before we fire the missile, fire the missile, then perform our split S. That gives you a few milliseconds extra escape time, if that makes sense. It means that when you fire the missile, you're at R lethal, you're already inverted for the split S. It's just extra optimal. You don't have to do it. And if you're going to do it, be careful, because if you put any negative G in at that point, you'll stall those engines uh, in an F-15 or an F-18. So double check. Uh, so yeah, so do it at the very last moment if you're going to invert and fire the missile straight away and then dive straight away. I'm not going to go uh, talk about this split S because that's the end of the scope of this video. We've got other videos on how to split S correctly and optimally uh, against the target. Okay, so that has described exactly how we do our offensive missile crank. So all you're going to want to know now is, well, how does this work? What are we actually doing here? What this means is that this makes us essentially invulnerable from, the, from hostile missiles from the hostile. So let's say we crank at 25 miles and all the way down to our lethal plus three, which is, what, 13 miles. This guy is going to fire missiles. In this case, I'll make him a flanker so we can see the missiles when they're fired on our RWR. A nice big R27 ERs. A nice big long range missiles. Hard to beat at long range. And he'll fire them probably at 20 miles and then 15 miles and then probably 12 miles. And because I'm going to be cranking heavily at this point, that missile can't just go from his plane directly to me. Remember, we've got to talk ballistics here. It has to lead out in front of me. And it's going to do that. It's going to lead a huge off. So let's say we're at that point there. His missile will fire something like that from him. And now the beauty about that is, well, if I just kept cranking, that missile would hit me eventually. It would have the energy to hit me. But what I'm going to do at this point here is I'm going to turn in. Before that missile hits me, I'm turning in. And before I get there, those missiles have been fired and almost certainly their rocket motors would have burnt by then. The rocket motors work for 5 to 10 seconds, depending on what type of missile it is. And once that rocket motor has finished burning, it's gliding. And once it's gliding, any missile cannot turn. As soon as it turns, it's burnt its energy off. It's burnt its potential words, mechanical energy off. It can no longer turn and sustain its speed. So... 
Moral of the story, by the time I'm turning this here at our lethal plus three, the missile engines of the hostiles have all burned. They're all slight. They're close to me. They're out here, but their missiles have burned, and they can't turn into me. They can't then turn into me and hit me. It makes me, if I do it perfect, invulnerable to the hostile. The only vulnerability I have is if he fires at me once I've done this turn. At that point, it's 50-50. So if this guy is good, and he knows that I'm cranking, he can offset the... Um, ability of my crank by firing at me at that place in that stretch there the chances are however um, he won't do that if he's an AI computer he won't have the intelligence to do that he's just not programmed that highly if he's a human only if he's a cranker himself will he understand about this and so the chances are we'll be fine okay so that explains exactly what we do when we do it depending on what variables and how it works in terms of ballistics so I've got nothing else I can think of saying about that is apart from go and do it so I'm going to go and do it now and then we'll have a look quick on the attack for you just to prove all the concepts we've talked about then we'll finish up with the conclusion and that's it so stand by right so I'm going to uh, lock you up power on gonna wait till tw uh, 25 miles right we're 28 miles about to crank Twenty-six miles, five miles, off we go. Oh, and we've got a missile out. That there is our crank angle from him. Forty, fifty, sixty, sixty-five. I'm going to have to adjust that constantly, nineteen miles. Turning that in slightly, seventeen miles. 16 miles 15 miles 14 miles Turn in That's all the way And out we go Good luck, Mr. Missile. Hey, bam, bam. We got boom, boom. Right, well, it wasn't perfect, but it was okay. Next, we're going to repeat, but this time, Joker is allowed to crank. Okay, let's have a quick look at that. So we've got me there, here. Our basic statistics are here, and here, and here are our full statistics, if you want to see that. So we're engaging. I've got a lock with 28 miles, so let's run this through. So at 25 miles, I'm going to crank. So let's speed that up. Okay, I'm cranking now. What speed are we at? Two. So I'm heading towards VMAX now. About, I don't know what it's going to be for the Hornet, a loaded Hornet, 670, nearly 700 maybe. Oh, you can see that the hostiles already fired a missile. Uh, they fired it quite far back. In this case, at, they fired it at 23 miles. So it's obviously a silly shot. But that's the kind of thing the AI do. Um, it would have hit me if I had carried going straight on. Um, it would have had the energy, but obviously I'm not going to do that. I'm going to crank, and you can see the deviation that missile now has to take. And it's pretty much out of rocket burn now, I imagine. Yeah, we're already down to a thousand knots, so already it's completely useless. Uh, so let's keep going. I'm up to 700 knots, so I'm pretty much at VMAX now. It's another missile out at uh, 14 miles. So this one's going to be a bit more difficult to scrub. And you see our angle there. Oh, I'm turning in now. Let's uh, not get ahead of ourselves. So we are there. This missile was fired before we turned in. You can see the massive crank angle, 70 degrees. So it's that angle there. About 70, 65 to 70 degrees we've got. So this missile, even though it's fired at 14 miles and is uh, can easily kill me as long as I'm on a head-on path, uh, it's going to have to fly all the way out here. And by the time its engine burn is done, well, we'll just see, shall we? It's that path it's got to take. Engine's still running, engine's still running. And now its engine's finished already, but also it's got, now got to turn back in to, um, to complete my turn. My, I'm turning right 65 degrees. It's got to make a massive deviation to try and get me. And by that time, that is going to run out of energy. It's already under 1,500 knots. I've got my missile out. Uh, let's go and have a look at me again doing the turn in. So I'm turning in now at what's the distance? Uh, should be a little bit before that. Yeah, I'm starting to turn it at 13 miles. So I've got three miles to get level and take the shot. I've inverted. 
I fired the missile exactly 10 miles uh, uh, as I'm supposed to. And I'm, I think I'm already inverted. Yep, I'm upside down. So all I've got to do is pull back on the stick now. And you see this thing, is, is, is just no way. There's no way it's going to have the uh, speed to get me. And my, my missile is going to chub him. And as soon as he gets the warning, he's supposed to dodge. He's dodging. Well, he's not going to dodge much, but... He, in re reality, he would have done a split S and dodged, but... Uh, the chances are within, unless he was a really good pilot, within uh, lethal range that would have killed him anyway. And that missile got within one mile, but it never really caught me up. Have a look at that again. I'm doing a lovely high G between exactly as you're supposed to, between 7 and 9G, and I'm keeping a really high uh, speed. I'm keeping VMAX Plus all the way around, basically. And then I'm down here, and we've got an unloaded extension now, and that missile is dead. So the only time during that when I was at vulnerable would be when I complete the turn there, between there and him firing the missile, is the only time I'm actually vulnerable, because the missile wouldn't have to lead me away. Uh, so if he fired, uh, sorry, I've got the wrong thing selected there. So if he fired between exactly 11 miles and 10 miles, he could have killed me. Anything else, he wouldn't have killed me. Because if he'd fired there, then that missile would have had to have led me down there and it would have burnt its rocket motor off. Um, so I'm only vulnerable for one mile of that. Otherwise, I'm pretty much invulnerable. Apart from, like we said, maybe the M54 uh, is a different story. We're not sure yet. And even if he'd split S, that perfect 10 mile uh, shot would have got him. Uh, or very likely it would have got him. And that's it. Um, there's nothing more to say. Uh, it's absolutely optimal. It's as good as we can possibly get. Uh, let's go and have a look at the next one now. Lock him up. Make sure we've got him. Okay, we've got him. 28 miles after Ben is on. Let's go and get him. You can see he's cranking right at the moment. So we're just going to point at him until 25 miles, then we'll begin our crank. 25 miles, begin the crank. Twenty degrees, twenty three miles. Forty degrees. It's in our RWR dead zone now, that's why it's gone silent. Sixty degrees, twenty miles. Sixty five degrees. Eighteen miles. Missile out from the hostel. 15 miles. I see his missile. 14 miles. 13 miles. In we go. Missile out. I think I accidentally did two, but. And we are out of here. You survived it, you bummer. How did you survive it? Just, cr I just reversed my crank. Hey! <laughs> Very good. All right, cheers for being a good uh, sport, Joker. Okay, this time Joker is cranking as well, and he's doing about what looks like about 70 degrees to the right. So it's going to change what we do in the way that we're cranking. All we have to do is monitor our hard and make sure we keep that crank angle the same. So we've reached 25 degrees. We're heading up to V Max. I'm cranking left now. Speed that up a little. And Joker's turning in for a shot here, 20 miles. It's quite realistic. He'd turn in for a shot, fire, and then start cranking again. But he probably won't in this case. We'll have to see. Um, so, yep, yeah, we're at 700. We're at VMAX now. Let's skip that forward a little. No, there comes a missile at 16 and a half miles this, in this case. And again, you can see how much happened to lead. So its rocker, rocket motor is going to be used all in this phase of the lead phase. And he's put the crank on again to make it difficult, you can see. So we're now both cranking. We're just going to um, uh, minimise our uh, convergence rate. I'm at 13 miles, I'm doing my turn in. He's going to turn in by the looks of it. So I'm bending this missile around, but look how it's scrubbed its speed off, um, having with no rocket motor, having to turn at that point. Uh, I've got... Sorry, I um, skip that forward a little bit faster. Let's just go back. 
So when am I missing? I've turned in at 30 miles. I'm missile out at, where is it? 11 miles. A little bit, a little bit keen there. I think that's why I fired a second missile because I fired by accident too close. Yeah, so I'm a little bit premature there. Uh, and that shows really how you've got to be super accurate for this to work. Um, but anyway, let's carry on. I'm going into my dive now, and because it's a VMAX plus dive, I'm going above VMAX here. That missile is already slower than me, look, so there's nothing it can do to catch up. And see you later. And in this case, Joker's not going to dodge. I did ask him to dodge, but never mind, doesn't really matter. Um, that's him taken out. Uh, lovely. Uh, make sure he dies. Oh, he doesn't. He must have beamed the missiles. Oh no, he did. It was just a, it was just a delayed lag kill. Uh, right. Uh, anything else? Again, the only time I was really vulnerable was between there, um, kind of there, when I finished my turn at eleven and a half miles, and between when I split at S eleven miles. So I did everything, and I'm uh, uh, a mile too soon in this case. I should have waited another mile, and I still would have beaten this missile. So I could have done that safely. And that's it. So it's going through everything. When we should do it, what it does, why we should do it, how the enemy reacts to it, how we calculate all the figures on the fly, because you can't just use 10 miles every time. It's varying on our altitude, our speed, his altitude, his speed, and so on and so forth. So go on, do some cranking, do it against AIs, do it against humans, and you will see that you suddenly become really freaking good at kill shots. I hope that helps and see you later.